Hello everyone, welcome back and today we are looking at question 36 which is valid Sudoku. Now instead of reading the description of the question, I will go straight to the blackboard, explain what Sudoku is and explain the rules of the game and finally show you how simple this question can get. Alright, so let's get straight to the blackboard. Okay, so here we have a Sudoku board. Now, what is Sudoku? Okay, so it's a game, we have a board and this board is 9 by 9 which means we have 9 rows and 9 columns now each row and each column will have numbers 1 through 9 okay also this box is divided as you can see into 9 smaller boxes here we have a box here we have a box here we have a box etc as you can see each box is 3 by 3 now as you can guess these boxes also have numbers 1 through 9. So we have rows, we have columns, and we have these small boxes. Each one of those will have numbers 1 through 9. So what are the constraints of the game? So basically for any row and any column, we cannot have any duplicates, okay? Also for any box, we cannot have any duplicate. For instance, if we have a 5 here, let me ask you, can we have a 5 right here? Well, one, we cannot do that. Why? Because we have a five in this row. So we cannot have another five in the same row. So what if we remove this five? Okay, so let's say we have an empty spot right here. Can we have a five here? Well, no again. Why? Because we have a five in the same column right here. If we remove this five, now we can have a five right here. Same thing for the um, boxes. Let's say we have a nine here. Can we have a 9 right here? I know one no because we have a 9 in the same row, but also no because we have a 9 in the same box. So for any number in the Sudoku board, we have three questions we need to ask. Hey, can we find this number in the same row? Can we find this number in the same column? Can we find this number in the same box? Right? And of course we need to answer no for all of those questions, which means this number is unique in that row, in that column, and in that box. So um, we know we need to traverse through the whole board and check every number in the board and ask those three questions. But as you can see, some spots are empty and the question is saying we can have or we will have a dot in these empty spots indicating that there is no number right there. So if we are traversing through the board and we see a dot, we can just simply skip that spot because we are not interested in empty spaces right we just want to check those questions regarding each number on the board okay so now how can we do that okay so let's say we are at this five right here so we can say okay um for any number we want to see if it's unique in the row column and the box so we can say hey we have this five at row zero we can also say, okay, we have this 5 at column 0, and we can say we have this 5 at, uh-oh, what should we put here? How can we say in this box right here? How can we identify this box, or that box, or any box on the board, right? We need a way to identify, to uniquely identify each box. Hmm. So let's think about this. If we know this right there, then we will solve the whole problem so easy. So let's see. Let's look at the indices of the Sudoku board. We have 0, 1, 2, and all of these numbers are belonging to this box right here. Okay, we have 3, 4, 5, they are belonging to this box. We have 6, 7, 8, they are belonging to this box. Same thing here, 0, 1, 2 for this box, 3, 4, 5 for this, and so on. So a group of three indices are belonging to the same box so we can have okay we can have a zero index for this row okay and we can have a one index for this row and we can have a two for this row right same thing for the columns we can have a zero we can have a one and we can have a two right so how can we get these indices from these 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, you know, etc. Hmm, well, since we said a group of three numbers belonging to the same box, 
well we can divide each index by three right we can use integer division so let's see what happens if we divide the column by three and if we divide the row by three what happens well let's see we have zero zero divided by three is zero okay now what is one divided by three well it's zero point three three etc but we are using integer division which means we will take the integer part only so one divided by three is zero same thing two divided by three is zero okay now what about three four five well three by three is one four by three is one point something but again integer division so it's also one five by three is one now six by three is two seven by three is two eight by three is two so now we can uniquely identify each box by the following this box is zero comma zero this box is zero comma one same thing as rows and columns this one is zero comma two etc so this five we can find it at row zero at column zero and at box zero comma zero you can put a comma we can put a dash anything you want but this five is at box zero zero okay good so now let's see this three we can say okay this three is at row zero this three is at column one this three at box zero zero so now okay once we know all of this how can we compare the numbers to each other let's say we have a five right here we're gonna say okay this five is at row zero but we cannot have duplicates but how can we check if we have duplicates well we need something fast and of course we need something that does not allow any duplicates now let's think what's a good thing to use for these constraints mm, okay well we can use a hash set the lookup time in the hash set is constant we go off one and the hash set does not allow any duplicates so we can put all of these information in a hash set now when we go to this tree and we say okay let's add the following information into the hash set we found three at row zero it's not a duplicate we found three at column uh, one not a duplicate we found three at box zero zero not a duplicate so what if we have a five right here okay we will say we find a five at row zero oh we have a duplicate right here it won't work what about if we have a five right here we can say okay we find a five at row one not a duplicate we don't see it yet we find five at column one not a duplicate but now look we find five at box zero zero we have a duplicate right here so not valid to do board so that's it this is the question for each number we need to store all those information in a hash set which means our hash set will contain strings and these strings will identify each number okay so let's now look at the code and it's straightforward once we understand this so we said we need a hash set of strings so let's create that so we have set and this hash set will contain we said strings so we have string and let's call it scene which means these are the characters that we see it in the board so new hash set now what well now we said we need to traverse through the whole board so we need a nested for loop because we have the sudoku board it's like to the array right so we will say okay for int okay so for int i equals zero i is less than nine because of course we have nine rows and nine columns then i plus plus then of course we will have okay for int j equals zero j is less than also nine because nine rows and nine columns then j plus plus all right so now what well now let's store the character that we are standing on in a variable right it will make the code easier to read and i said character so character of num equal on um, board of i and j so here is i and here is j okay so in this case we have a five now what should we do with this five well first thing first we said if it's an empty space we don't need to look at it we just skip it right so we can say hey if this number is not an empty space then we are interested in it so and we have a character so we need a single quotes and if it's not a dot then it's a number and we need to check if the number 
belong to the conditions we just described. Now what? Well, we need these three information about the number. So we can store to the hash set. We can say, okay, scene dot add that num plus which row we found it. So which we can say at row plus just add the row. Okay. And now we can say we have scene dot add. We have that number and we can say on which column we found that, right? So plus at and this should be a T, not an R. So at column and then we add, of course, the column. And finally, we need to say on which box we found that number. So scene dot add that number at box. So we have at box. Now, how should we identify the box we said? Well, we said, hey, we have the column divided by three and the row divided by three. Now, what is the row? Well, we said I, so I divided by three. We have plus, I don't know, we can put a comma, we can put a dash, anything you want. So, and we need the column divided by three. So column divided by three. So J divided by three. Okay, so now what? We have this information that we will store in the hash set. Hmm. So we said if the number is not a space, we need to check those conditions. Okay, so we need an if statement, right? So if, if what? Well, hmm, let's see. If we cannot add this number to the hash set, if we cannot because we have a duplicate in the row, or if we cannot add it to the hash set because it's a duplicate in the column, or if we cannot add it to the hash set because we have a duplicate in the box, it's not a valid Sudoku. Now, it's important to note that this add function returns a Boolean. So now we can say, okay, if, let's see, if we cannot add this one to the hash set because we have a duplicate on the row, we need to return false. So, or, if we cannot add it to the hash set because we have a duplicate in the column, we also need to return false. So, or if we cannot add it to the hash set because we have a duplicate in the box, we need also to return false. Okay, so let's put them right here. We have them and we need reset to return false. We need to return false. Okay, so now if it's not an empty space, we check all these conditions. If we cannot add the number to the hash set because it's a duplicate on the row, in the column or the box, we just return a false. So now we need, before we forget, close the bracket for this if statement, and that's it. If we finish the for loops and we did not return a false, then we have a valid Sudoku. So just return true. That's it. Okay, so for instance, if we have a five right here, Let's see what happens. So we have a five right here. We go to the if statement. Is it an empty space? No. So we go right here. We have this five. We have the five at row zero. Now we are trying to add it to the hash set. Since we have a duplicate, this add function will return a false. Now we have a not at the front. So a not false will become true since we have or statement. The whole statement would be true and we will execute this false and we will return false. Now, if we have, let's look at this three. We are saying, okay, we have three at row zero. We don't have a duplicate. So we have three at column one. We will not have a duplicate and we have three at box zero, zero. Of course, we do not have a duplicate. So we just go to the next number and that's it. Okay, so before I run the code, I just removed the extra spaces that I put when I was explaining the duplication in the row colon box. So it's the same code. I just removed, you know, an extra spaces and so. So now let's run the code and let's submit. Okay, so now let's look at the time and space complexity. Now, since we have a fixed Sudoku board with fixed, you know, uh, number of fields and we know it's always nine by nine, it's fixed, the time and space will be constant, we go off one. But if we have maybe a changing input and it's the board is not nine by nine anymore, let's say we have an arbitrary number n, we are looping through all the fields of the board 
and assuming that the length is n of the board we have n rows we have n columns the time complexity would be big o of n squared same thing for the space complexity if we have a valid board and it's filled with numbers we need to store all those numbers into the hash set so assuming we have n by n board the space would be a big O of n squared. But again, since this board is fixed, we have a nine by nine board, you, you can consider the time and space to be a big O of one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Best of luck to you, and I will see you on the next one.